Generative AI is the phrase that is used to describe models that can create novel data, information, or documents. This data can take the form of images, text, or audio, either in an original format or following another style. You might have seen generative AI being used for simple and seemingly not effective ways. For example, for a while, creating portraits of yourself in many different styles was a popular application. Afterwards, with the emergence of ChatGPT, people started interacting with this AI model through text, generating answers to their questions through a chat, and making it even complete simple tasks. But the power of generative AI can cover much more than that. On top of use cases serving directly to end users, there are other more complex uses of generative AI that can create value. For example, generated images again can be used to create character art to inspire creative processes. Or in a game development setting, generating character animations to yield natural motions would free up developers for other tasks. Another use case could be efficiently handling meeting recordings. Many businesses record their meetings, both in person or virtual. With generative AI, you can automatically generate a list of action items to ensure that meetings have actionable value. You can generate a summary of the meeting for people who couldn't make it to the meeting. You can generate context-relevant answers to questions that come up during the meeting. All of this can be done with Assembly AI's latest model, Lemur. And to try out Lemur, you can head to our playground to see it in action on your audio or video files. But what are these models and how do they work? So there is not one architecture or model that can generate data. There's a lot of experimentation and trial and error that goes into creating these models. In the image space, advances have primarily relied on diffusion models. Whereas in the language space, advances have been made mostly with the transformers architecture. There is, however, one thing that all of these models have in common, and that is the task that they're achieving. We will get a little bit geeky and mathy here for a second, so bear with me. The thing that they have in common is all of these generative models are modeling a joint distribution. What is a joint distribution? A joint distribution gives the probability of multiple events occurring simultaneously. For example, what is the probability of rolling a two on a first die roll and three on a second die roll. Once the generative AI models model this joint distribution, the data that is created can be used in multiple different ways. For example, it can be used to train another model, a discriminative AI model. Famously, in the GAN architecture, there is a generator model that generates data and a discriminator model that decides which piece of data is real and which ones are fake. This way, both models get better in time. The traditional machine learning models that make predictions are all discriminator models. For example, random forest, decision trees, support vector machines, logistic regression, and simple neural networks. For comparison here, some of the discriminator models can be simplified as modeling a conditional distribution, which is the possibility of something happening based on events that have already happened. So the question here would be, what is the probability of rolling a six on a die if we know that the rolled number is an even number? The condition in this context is the features of a data point. For example, the goal for one of these models could be to determine whether someone's identity has been stolen given their transaction history, including information like transaction amount, date, or time. In contrast with generative AI, the goal is to understand how these features relate, so what their joint distribution is, to be able to generate plausible data. For example, the goal could be to generate a representative sample of humans in terms of body size. Let's take size in a simple way here and say height and weight. In this case, this set of samples would not really be realistic. It is very unlikely to have someone that is that tall and thin and someone that is that short and wide. Instead, we need to model the statistical distribution of height and weight in the population we wish to sample from to be able to generate realistic novel data like this one. The main promise of generative AI is being able to handle tasks that are a step beyond simple automation. So we are now not only writing the code to count how many times the word budget was mentioned in a meeting, but we are able to automatically extract what there needs to be done about the budget based on this meeting. And this is a task that would have definitely required human effort previously. To this effect, we can actually discuss that the main contribution of generative AI to our world will be bridging the gap between ideas and the results of these ideas. 
If we think of a company that wants to grow the social shares of its articles, you can come up with a bunch of action items that can be taken to achieve this goal. Many times these items are simple and quick actions to be taken, so it seems straightforward to try out these options one by one and evaluate how they affect the number of social shares. But the human implementation of these items is where the bottleneck is. Either because responsible people are too busy with other tasks, or they need to relearn some skills, for example, how to use a certain Python library to achieve this task. But by using generative AI, you can accelerate the completion of some of these tasks and speed up the experimentation process to achieve the goal. For example, by asking ChatGPT to create the code that creates buttons to share the current page on social media. You would still need a competent developer to verify this code and then integrate it into the current code base, but at least the time needed to research, relearn some skills, write and troubleshoot the code is cut down by a lot. Generative AI models are already being used in everyday life, and with new tools coming out more or less every week, we're probably going to start seeing more complex tasks being covered by AI or AI assisting humans to do their jobs more efficiently. If you'd like to quickly see how generative AI can be used on your audio or video files, you can go check out our Lemur playground. You can upload a video or audio file or just a YouTube link and ask questions about the contents of the file, get a summary, or even create a list of tasks to be done. What do you think will be the next groundbreaking use of generative AI? You can comment and let us know. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel to get more videos about AI, but also to follow our series about generative AI in the coming weeks. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.